Welcome to our course, to our program. I take it everybody has the agenda um, and I'm supposed to start with introductions. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I'm told that when, when holding a, a Zoom meeting, uh, a virtual meeting, that it's, it's always good to have an icebreaker, okay? Um, so let me, let me just say that um, I think an icebreaker is appropriate because I have a feeling that everybody is, is uh, experiencing a hot climate. Those who are experiencing a hot climate, raise their hands. Okay, don't, okay, I'm just trying to, I just want to see if you guys are able to move, able to raise your hands. Okay, very good. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm not just looking at a screenshot of your face, okay, and, and you're off doing something in the kitchen, okay? All right, so let me, uh, since, since most of us are in a hot climate, uh, I like to, uh, I think an icebreaker is, is appropriate, and, and I'm not going to ask you what's your favorite book, uh, what trip are you taking, though I guess most people are not taking trips, though we, we might be beginning. Okay, so let me give you, um, I like to tell a personal story about myself, okay, recently. Um, uh, in anticipation of the summer back in May, I, I wanted to uh, buy some sunglasses, okay, and, and I found this really nice pair in the United Kingdom, uh, and, and so I ordered it, and about a few weeks later, I get a call from the manager uh, of the sunglass place in the UK saying that uh, uh, their sunglasses are in Tennessee in the US, but it's being held up by customs because customs needs some further documentation uh, of the sunglasses because the sunglasses is considered a medical device. And a few minutes later, the custom officer gave me a call and said, listen, we got your sunglasses, but..." We need certification from the manufacturer because this is a medical device. I said, what, what are you talking about? It's sunglasses, it's not prescription, okay? And, and the person said, well, it, it, um, it, it uh, blocks out the ultraviolet light. And so we considered it a medical device. And unless the manufacturer sends in some more documentation, we're gonna send it back. And the manufacturer called me and said, just, just tell them to send it back. We'll resend it and, and we'll call it on the, um, on, on the way bill, the uh, international way bill, that it's a present. We won't say it's sunglasses. I said, well, whatever you want to do is fine with me. Okay. So, uh, so they sent it back to me uh, and, and I got it a few days. And I got the sunglasses, and and I just I just want to show you my sunglasses. So there, here it is. What what do you think? Okay. Uh, well, uh, well, well worth the wait, huh? Yes, yes. Okay. This is now. Be careful. It's a medical device. Okay. I gotta be careful. Okay. And um and and please. Uh, this is confidential information. You all sign. That's that's the only reason why I had you sign those confidentiality sheets so that you don't report me to the FDA. Uh, the FDA has other things to do. You know, they're trying to authorize, you know, uh, dozens of different vaccines, okay, for all the different variants, okay? So they don't want to be bothered with my sunglasses. Okay. All right. So now... Now on to the show. Okay, very good. So uh, I think that um, you know, I think the um, well, why don't why don't we just quickly introduce ourselves? That's another requirement for Zoom meetings. Okay, but I'm going to warn you, you: you should only take seven seconds to introduce yourself. We only want your name and uh, where you're from and and what specialty you're at. So just like six or seven seconds, okay? Uh, we, we, I know people tend to draw out these introductions, okay? We don't want to hear anything more about you, okay? All right, so why don't we go? 
let's, uh, I don't know how to start this. Um, so everybody just start to turn off your mic and start talking. Okay, I, 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 I see some of your names. Uh, why don't we start with the person who's called the research center? Okay. Uh, Nida Ghori. I'm Nida Ghori from Pakistan. Basically, I'm a microbiologist, but, but working as research okay, associate that's that's at perfect. the hospital center. Okay, next, Siti. Hi, good, good day, everyone. I'm Siti from Malaysia. Uh, I'm a medical record officer from uh, a Clinical Research Center, Ministry of Health. Okay, very good, Maha. And identify yourself as the faculty. Hello, everyone. My name is Maha. I'm from Egypt. I'm, I'm one of the faculty. Um, I'm a medical doctor. My specialty is rheumatology, and I'm also a student. I was a student in the research ethics program. Hello, everyone. Okay, very good. John. Hello, my name is John Pringle. I am from Canada, but I'm working in Myanmar with MSF as a doctor of public health. Okay, very good. Erfan. Yes, hey guys. I'm Erfan. I'm a dentist and I'm from Iran. Nice to see you guys. You're from I I Iraq? Why, why do I think you're from Iran? Iran, Iran, yeah. It's the same. Oh, Iran. Right. Okay, you did say that. Very good. Sorry. Okay. Next, Tamar. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Tamar Hafnawi, professor of public health. I will be serving as one of the faculty in this program. And nice to meet you all. Okay, very good. You are, if I pronounce that right. Oh, well, let me go down this list here. Noir, am I saying that right? Our friend from Morocco. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Noir. I am from Morocco. I'm otolaryngologist and assistant professor at FAS University. Um, and I'm happy to be with you. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Sarah. Oh, I'm Sarah from El Elrod, Kenya, and I'm a resident in psychiatry. Thank you. Happy to be here. Okay, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Kyo from Yama. I'm a surgeon. Uh, I'm the only one person who has the double duty as a student, also as a faculty. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And, and hopefully you'll do well in one of those capacities. Okay, very good. Rahab. Um, hello everyone. I am uh, Rahab Abdelhai. I am professor of public health at Cairo University. I will be serving as faculty and I'm very happy to be with you today. Very good, Hani. Hani Slim, uh, Egypt, National Hepatology and Tropical Medicine Research Institute, consultant dermatology. Very good. Asma. Hello, everyone. This is Asma Sadeh from Egypt. I'm a pharmacist working as a researcher at Minister's uh, Technical Office uh, for Minister's Advisor for uh, uh, Research Development, Ministry of Health. Very good. Zainab. Zainab. Hello, everybody. I'm Zainab from Egypt. I'm a lecturer of public health. I'm a faculty member in this course. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Amir. So I'm presuming this was Amir. I'm Amir Jafri from the Center of Biomedical Ethics and Culture at Kara in Karachi in Pakistan. I'm merely a fly on the wall uh, here for 35 minutes. Okay, thank you for joining. Isabel. Hi everyone, I'm Isabel May. I'm a professor of science communication at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, where Henry teaches as well. I'm originally from Germany and I'm looking forward, I'm faculty in this program, and I'm excited to work with you on anything related to scientific writing. Thank you, Katrina. I'm Katrina Burns uh, from Michigan. 
and I am a, a research health scientist and I work with OSHA. Ahmed. Hi everyone, I'm Ahmed Yasin al Qutaybi from Yemen, serving as assistant professor of Postodontic at Taiba University, Saudi Arabia. Very good, thank you. Okay. Um, who's next? Um, um, I, I, Sanda. Yes, uh, hello, nice to meet you all. I'm E. Sanda Mo from Myanmar. I'm lecturer at Department of Our Statistics, University of Public Health, Myanmar. Very good, thank you. Esther. Good afternoon, people. My name is Esther from uh, Kenya. I currently study uh, parasitology at Kenya Methodist. Kenya. Very good. Thank you. Jeanette. I'm morning, everyone. My name is Jeanette. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies. I'm a lecturer in physiology in the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies, Trinidad. Very good, thank you. Farhat. Hi everyone, my name is Farhat. I am an uh, I'm specialized in oncology. Uh, my area of specialty by profession, I'm a nurse and my area of interest is palliative care. Very good, thank you. So Suhail. Hello everyone, my name is Suhail Al Ahmad. I am an associate professor at the University of Sharjah, United Arab Emirates, con also consultant to oral medicine. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see now. I I have to go to the other screen here. Uh, Emmanuel. Hi, everyone. Okay. It's a. Hello. <laughs> and where are you from, Emmanuel? I'm Nigerian, but I'm resident in Kenya. You're what? I'm Nigerian, but I'm resident in Kenya. Okay. All right. Mm. Very good. Okay. Mm. Uh, who's. Who's next? Iman? Hello, uh, I'm Iman um, from Myanmar, uh, currently working as a clinical nutritionist at the specialist clinics and private hospitals in Myanmar. Nice to meet you all. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not going to get this name right. Uh, uh, Elvis. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, and you're from where? Yes, I'm Elvis Dikum from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Uh, I'm an, a, a, health, a health trainer for the World Organization of Family Doctors. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yaoundé is. Yes, I'm Yaldiz. I'm a uh, professor of nursing management and from Egypt. Okay, welcome. Abir. Hello, everyone. I'm Amir Selim from Alexandria, Egypt, and I work as an associate professor in College of Nursing, uh, Mansoura University. Okay, very good. Miad, sure. Um, good day, everyone. I am, uh, you can call me Isaac. I'm a junior medical officer from Yango, Myanmar. Uh, nice to meet you all. Okay, thanks for joining. Okay, uh, who else? Uh, Ahmed from. Um, yes, I'm uh, the only one left here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed Kibeli. I'm a clinical pathologist and uh, I'm a medical writer at Clean Art Mina CRO. And uh, it's nice to meet you all. Okay, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we're all going to uh, get to know each other more and more throughout the year. In fact, I have a feeling that in the past week, very active discussion on the discussion forum and 
I I really feel like uh, we we are uh, we've gotten to know each other, and uh, and we're we have started already to create an online what what's called an online community, and we're going to have more and more virtual webinars. I'll 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 say more about that in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. Um, so let me. Um, oh, okay. Let me. Um, we're going to um, uh, try to keep on schedule, but if we don't, we don't. Um, and you know, we'll we'll have some um, some technical issues, I'm sure, but that's okay. All right. The the good thing is that this program doesn't end on Sunday. This is merely the introduction to the program, and we have a whole year. And if if we don't get done with what we need to get done with, that's okay. Uh, and as you can see, we could accomplish a lot uh, with the online, what I call asynchronous program, in addition to the virtual virtual uh, program as well. So let me. Um, uh, let's see now. Let me let me start and give some more int introduction uh, to the um, to the program and what what's in store for us. Um, so the, um, the the mission of this program is simply uh, to develop and nurture a community of diverse individuals, and I I. I think I could surely say that we have diverse individuals from all over the world committed to alleviating suffering in the world. And, and we do that by doing research. And research is considered a social institution. It's not considered merely an academic institution. We, we do research in, in order to advance equity within our countries, within the world, uh, improve society, and also ensure social justice uh, with our research. So again, research is not merely an academic uh, endeavor. It's a social institution. It's one of the pillars of, of our society to help advance the health of our community. The and, uh, and the specific aims, that's what's the goal, is to advance health in our communities, in the world, and achieve social justice. Our specific aims for this program is to develop a research proposal, and hopefully by the end of these three days, most, if not all of us, will be on track with their research proposal. And let me say just now that uh, this, uh, developing a research proposal in and it of itself is a journey. It's one of the hardest things that we could do. And, and if you, and we'll talk more about this, if you feel like that uh, maybe, maybe you have second thoughts about the original proposal you propose and you want to change, that is okay, okay? Because it's a journey and uh, sometimes we'll talk more about how we get ideas for our research proposal. Our second specific aim is actually once we write out the proposal and hopefully get approval from the research ethics committee, we're going to conduct the research and analyze the data, and then we're going to write it up and publish and publish the um, uh, uh, manuscript. So again, the sequence of the program developed a research question, ensure the ethical aspects of the proposal, get approval, conduct the research, and then we're going to publish the manuscript. Uh, now, two major, there's many different competencies involved in writing a proposal, conducting the research, but the two major competency is going to be scientific writing and critical thinking. They go hand in hand in writing a research proposal. Just think about it. In order to write well, you have to think well. And, and when you think well, you have to be able to communicate your ideas 
um, to, to your uh, colleagues. And hence, these compensa competencies of scientific writing and critical thinking, we're going to use throughout the whole program. We're going to need research methodology. We're going to need statistics. But throughout the whole year, we're going to also um, uh, um, teach. And you're going to learn more about scientific writing and critical thinking skills. And the major outcome will be a publication or a grant submission, but most likely a publication. And and we're gonna, and it may take more than a year, but I will stick with you guys until you get that paper published. Okay, all right. If, even if I have to start a journal myself, but I I don't think that will be necessary. Okay. Uh, this slide shows shows our faculty, uh, most of our faculty. Uh, we have um, uh, Tamar, Nahad, Rahab, this is me. Uh, this is Sama, who's uh, not on the call today. This is Isabel. This is John. Oh, he's always moving around. This is um, Shaw. Uh, this is Zanab Suhail. Uh, we have two other faculty members who recently joined us who won't be on this virtual workshop. That's um, Professor Nahed Kandil from Mansour University in Egypt, and also Professor Elizabeth Bukusi from Kenya. And there will be additional faculty and also additional mentors. And, and so we're trying to build up an international faculty as well. Did I leave anyone else out? Uh, uh, okay, very good. All right, so now the structure of the program, okay, is that uh, we're going to have three virtual workshops. The first one is the next three days. The second one, something like in December. I, I know I have dates listed on the website. And the last one in June, we may need to move that up a little bit. Now, in between these workshops, the I mean, the major, we're going to have several um, teaching pedagogy. We're going to have uh, on the online site, uh, video lectures, discussion, um, and, and we have a lot of uh, teaching resources on the online site that we'll keep on adding. But the major thing is that uh, we're going to have asynchronous online learning in the form of discussion forums where we'll either talk more about your proposals uh, or we'll have uh, uh, special topics that we'll talk about uh, regarding research methodology, research ethics, and statistics. And we're going to have frequent webinars between the workshops where uh, this will give an opportunity for candidates to keep on discussing their proposals. As you can see, the major way in which we progress with our research proposals is, is to have uh, keep on talking about our progress. Uh, and let me say right now, I, I'm endorsing a, a, a three-part type of mentorship where there'll be peer-to-peer -peer me mentorship. And you see already how that has, has worked where we, I mean, we, we are providing advice to each other. And as we do that, I, I think it's been a wonderful learning experience to see what other people are doing. I mean, it's been amazing to see what other types of research people are doing. And uh, even though you might be doing quantitative research, it's always good to see what type of qualitative research other people are doing. And, and it just opens our eyes to see the topics and the methodologies that other people are doing. Now, also, each, each person will be assigned 
a mentor as well uh, and throughout the year to keep you on track and uh, a go-to person who you could talk with about, about your research and also about your challenges uh, because we want to hear about the challenges. And then uh, we're going to have um, uh, Isabel Rahab and, and Sama uh, throughout the year provide uh, 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 guidance on scientific writing, research methodology, and statistics. So it's not the tr traditional one-on-one -on -one mentorship. We're going to have different types of mentorship. Again, peer-to-peer, -peer, faculty to individual, and then we have uh, people with this special expertise in scientific writing, research methodology, and statistics provide mentoring throughout throughout the, the whole year. And I'm thinking uh, now these uh, webinars, all right, in between the workshops will, will not include the whole crowd, uh, but it may include maybe uh, 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 10 people at a time where they'll present uh, their progression of their research and how they're doing and what challenges they're meeting, if that makes sense. And, and these will be virtual uh, and as much as possible, we'll try and divide up the groups in similar time zones, okay, to, to make it more convenient. They'll all be taped and if it's, if you miss it, not to worry, okay, uh, it's, you know, uh, but the concept is to keep on talking to, to each other. So any questions about the structure of this program? I, I know it may still sound a little loosey-goosey, uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be well-structured uh, uh, as, 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 soon, as soon as I think more about it. Okay. Any questions about that? Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and let me know if you have any questions. Um, um, uh, I'm not monitoring the chat, not yet, so I have no idea uh, about the back, the backstage conversation that you guys are having, which I welcome. I, I like that part of Zoom where people could have a backstage conversation. Like, yeah, what did he just say? I, I didn't understand what he just said. Okay, all right, which is okay. Uh, I reviewed the chat later on. Okay, so essentially we want to have collaborative learning. We're going to learn from each other, all right? And, and because I can't teach you everything, Rahab can't teach you everything, Isabel, Maha, Suhail can't teach you everything. We learn from each other and the I personally learned from you guys, so uh, thank you very much. Okay, so the timeline, these are rough timelines, okay? And so essentially in July and August, we're gonna spend time formulating what re the research question and the objectives, essentially what research we wanna do, and hopefully um, by the end of August, We'll be all on track on what research we want to um, do. And by the end of October, we should have a, a written proposal that we could submit to the Research Ethics Committee, if not sooner, okay? And, and hopefully get approval by around um, uh, December, if not sooner, okay? Everybody are in different stages of their research proposal, which is okay, all right? And then uh, December, February, collect the data, and then in March, analyze the data, and then April, June, write the manuscript, okay? Uh, ambitious, um, but I think it's doable. Again, if it takes more than a year, that is okay. No worries, okay? Uh, and if it goes sooner, obviously that's okay too. But these are rough guidelines on how to um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, exercise time management. Okay. All right. Any questions about this timeline? Okay. 
Okay. All right. You guys are really silent. Okay. We have to do something about that. But anyway, uh, requirements. Uh, well, obviously, the requirements is to uh, write a manuscript and get it uh, published, but we want to keep you on track and we want to make sure that you're progressing throughout the year. So we do expect attendance at all three workshops. If, you know, life has uh, uh, a crazy way of, uh, you know, bringing up things that uh, will interfere uh, or, um, you know, your obviously what's happening in your life is more important than this program. And if things come up, obviously things come up and, you know, no worries. All right. And I just hope we all stay well and safe throughout the year. Um, we, we, uh, uh, there is a requirement to participate in the forums and any assignments that we have. Okay. And, uh, we'll, we'll be um, grading the forums. Um, you know, we're not going to give you a letter grade at the end of the year, but, um, let me just say, I don't have this here, but the most important aspect, the reason why we want to grade it uh, and obviously read it is to give you feedback. All right. Feedback is the most important thing uh, that we could do as faculty. Okay. And we will give you feedback to see how you're doing. All right. You need to know if you're doing well, that's obviously easy feedback to give, uh, but if, if, you know, there needs to be some redirection, uh, we'll give you that feedback. Uh, and that's the important aspect of any, any teaching program, okay, is to give you feedback. We'll give you feedback on your writing uh, uh, um, uh, and, and your thinking skills and, and, and doing the research. Okay, so I guarantee we'll give you feedback. Uh, we want you to attend uh, most of the in uh, those webinars. We realize that not everyone could um, attend to all all the webinars. It's okay. We'll record them, and you could you know watch them offline. Okay. All right. So, any questions? about about the program itself please about the three workshop you mean uh, um the three consecutive days we're going to have to uh, this week or 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 in uh, in uh, july then december and later on right yes so so the the workshops the three day workshops obviously we're having one now uh oh. and we anticipate to have the second one in December, mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one, the website says June, but I think we may want to move that up to maybe April or May as, as you begin to write up your manuscript. Uh, so, uh, so we'll have three three-day workshops, virtual workshops, uh, mm -hmm. and, and in between those workshops, We'll have webinars, uh, like two-hour webinars, very frequently, okay. uh, at least once a month. Okay? Okay, thank you. All right, good. Thanks. Thanks for asking for more clarification. Excuse me, uh, but the uh, period of collecting data took more than uh, two months or three months. Uh, if uh, do I sh should I uh, change my uh, research proposal? Because for my research proposal, I don't think that two months is enough to get the data done, or maybe even six months. Right. Yeah. So, well, we're going to talk more about that in just a few minutes about the uh, uh, the so-called finer criteria, F-I-N-E-R where F stands for feasibility. Okay. Uh, and I stands for interest. Uh, a topic may be very interesting to you. Uh, and, uh, but 
we have to talk more about feasibility. And that would be uh, probably the major reason why somebody might want to change their research proposal. And this is the time to do it. Um, and, and again, um, um, uh, it, it may, you may not know, some people may not know exactly what they want to do uh, um, by the end of these three days, if you want to change the topic, and that's okay. All right. Um, uh, uh, nothing is set in stone. In fact, I think I would rather have people change the topic rather than uh, try to stick with something uh, if it's not feasible. I like that. If we have a chance to, to change our uh, submitted proposal, yes, I like it. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, this it's a journey. Uh, you may uh, want to change your proposal because it's not feasible. After mm -hmm. seeing what other people are doing, you, you may say, hey, that's a more interesting methodology. Uh, that's a more interesting question. Uh, you may decide that your topic is not all that novel, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, or may not be all that relevant. Uh, you know, don't don't try to. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say is um, uh, have the ability to let go of the topic you chose. Okay. Uh, don't don't consider it a failure if you have to let go and choose another one. Okay. In fact, the major reason why something doesn't get published starts from the beginning when you don't choose the right topic. You don't choose the right question. Okay. So you're going to fail to publish. The failure to publish starts from the beginning in how you choose your topic and, and how you narrow your research question. So by all means, uh, uh, don't be concerned about changing your topic. This was a first attempt at choosing a topic and don't be stubborn to let go. Thank you. Uh, I would rather see you let go and choose a topic and we're here to help you. Uh, uh, what, what, one of the major challenges to doing research is picking a topic and, and developing a research question. That's why people uh, are unable to do research that gets published. And by the time you hand in your manuscript, we don't want, you don't want to hear from the editors, uh, not very interesting, doesn't really change the world, blah, 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 okay? This is the start of the research process. So again, I can't, I can't say more about that point. This is where it begins. And uh, your first attempt, you may want to change your mind and, and the uh, mark of a, um, uh, I don't know what's the right word, uh, the mark of sophistication is, and that's not the right word, but I'm using it anyway, is to have the ability to change. Okay, so uh, we, we, uh, 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 we endorse that idea. I hope that helps. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, my question is that as we have shared uh, our concept paper, does our uh, mentor will uh, guide us whether we are going on the right track or, or we should change our concept uh, or we should change our uh, synopsis? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I we have shared. Hello, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Uh, as, as we have shared our concept paper, right? So, so who, Will our mentor will guide us whether we are going on the right track or not? Whether we should continue for our this uh, concept or we should change our concept for proposal writing or synopsis writing? 
Right, yes, uh, good question. So um, uh, doing the breakout rooms, we'll discuss our proposals uh, in, in small groups of uh, six or seven people. And, and this is the time, by the end of the three days, we should have a good feeling uh, whether uh, you should stick with it or maybe change, either change it, modify it, or, or move on to something else, okay? Uh, so that's the purpose of this workshop, is to look at what, and look at your first attempt and, and, and see how we could uh, 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 modify it to make it even more focused uh, or more feasible or more novel, uh, well, try and get the right research methodology. So by the end of the three days, we should have a good answer on whether, you know, let's stick with it or maybe we need something else. Yes, right. That's the purpose of this workshop. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, all right, good questions. So with that, um, I think that um, uh, in talking about the, um, the research process, since, since uh, uh, the research methodology is one of the most of important um, uh, issues uh, about about developing your research proposal. I would uh, like to have uh, uh, Professor Rahab uh, start talking about the research process uh, or, or research methodology and, and give you an overview of the scope of the different uh, types of methodologies. You've already seen in all the different proposals, all the different methodologies that have been proposed uh, under quantitative and qualitative, and, and it, it, it has uh, touched on the whole landscape of research methodology. And of course, obviously, it's very important to pick out the, re, uh, the correct research methodology once, once you've decided on what is the research question. So, um, Rahab, are you ready to, to go? Um, are you able to share your screen? Henry? Henry? Yeah. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, think, I think you should stop sharing your screen first. Uh, well, not really, but, uh, but I will. Um, OK. I think, uh, OK, I'll try. I'll try now and see. OK. okay. Can you see my screen now? Uh, change view and control. Are you able to see my screen? Um, maybe, maybe I do need to. Um... I don't. I should. You should be able to see my screen. Can people see my screen? No. Yes. Um, no, no, not yet. We're, we're seeing uh, Professor Silverman screen, not yet. All right. Okay. No, no, now, now. Are, now, now we can see your screen now. Okay. Okay. You're really good at this technology. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okie dokie. What the? Yeah. <laughs> Being all American now. <laughs> um. Okay, very nice to be with you, everyone. I'm trying to make uh, my presentation full screen. Okay, so um, I'm very happy to be with you today. And uh, I'm going to give a very quick overview of uh, research methodology. Uh, however, I'd just like to uh, emphasize that um, uh, these are just uh, a very, very um, quick overview of the research methodology and that each and every 
uh, study design has uh, its uh, specific characteristics and um, uh, we have to uh, be, uh, go back and maybe read further or uh, 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 discuss further about the different methodologies uh, that each and every one of us is using uh, and identify if it's the appropriate methodology to address that uh, research question that they have chosen for their uh, proposals. Um, so by the end of this session, uh, I hopefully we will all be able to be uh, on the same understanding of what is the definition of research, how can we identify the research problem and the research gap, and uh, recognize the main steps that are needed for conduction of research. So I'd like to start out with a quick discussion uh, from each and every one of you, if possible, about uh, what they think the definition of research is about. So what is research and why do we conduct research? I don't know if people would like to speak or would like to write in their chat. I cannot see the Hello. screen. I cannot see the screen of PPT uh, presentation. Okay, I mean, it should be there. Is, does, are you the only one who can't see my presentation? Everyone else can see it? Yes, yes I, I can, can see, I can see it. it. We can see it. That's clear. I can see it. I can. Yes, we can see. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure where the problem is. So maybe... Um, uh, you want I think she can go to view and choose to... Uh, Focus on the screen, okay? Okay. Can you oh, do that? Can leave the uh, leave the meeting and uh, enter again. Uh, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. Super duper. Okay. So um, let's see. Uh, what is research? What does everyone think is research is about? Why are we conducting research? Would you like to raise our hand or just talk? So please just go ahead. This is, you know, it's just a soft opening. So let's just have okay. a... Okay. Yeah. Your yeah. search could be a problem that search for a solution, or it could be a question that needs answer, or phenomena that could, uh, that needs to be studied more. Okay. Uh, anyone has any other uh, additions yes. or... Yes. Uh, yes, please. Yes. Yeah. I think research, uh, we, we need to conduct research to uh, answer uh, uh, unknown question or cover uh, a gap knowledge uh, that we need to uh, cover uh, to understand the problem or solve a problem. Okay, that's, that's very I, nice. I, I think research yes. could be defined as a systematic uh, scientific process to generate uh, new knowledge or to build on existing or refine existing knowledge and fill a gap in knowledge. Okay, thank you very much. Any other suggestions? Yes, I, I think we need to add that research can uh, change a concept or uh, uh, give advice for a change, uh, 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 yeah, definite concept. Okay. Or we can and say to find to find the reality, to find the facts. Okay, that's that's also a possibility. Yes. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes, I. Okay, I that's good. Thank that's you. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, any more suggestions? Anyone else feel that we need to add? So, basically, I think we've covered a lot of what. Uh, what, what research is about. So in a very broad sense, uh, research is about systematic and scientific study in order to establish facts uh, and uh, research uh, reach to new conclusions. And the most important thing uh, or the most important point that I'd like everyone to, to be on the same wavelength on is that uh, research can be defined as a systematic investigation designed to develop or contribute to general knowledge. So that's that's the main definition that we all want to uh, 
uh, be able to contribute or develop knowledge that can be applied in all the various fields each of us is working upon. Uh, so the next question is why should we conduct research? Well, so why are we why should we be bothered? I think the most important thing why we conduct research is to to fill a gap in knowledge. Okay. To have to have proof, uh, mm -hmm. to have proof, uh, mm -hmm. to find uh, to explain uh, that whether it is fact or not fact. Uh, means if you have to uh, say anything, you have to uh, you have to have proof. So for this purpose, we have to do research. Okay, that's, that's very good. So uh, thank you for your thoughts. Any more thoughts on that? Maybe to continue the uh, the work of others or uh, uh, where other uh, stops, we continue. Okay, that's perfect. So yes, uh, I think we've covered a lot. So yes, we do conduct research because the primary purpose is to answer a burning question and there is a gap in knowledge. And in addition to that, uh, we need to have the sufficient evidence uh, that supports the answers to our questions. So that is how uh, the, the evidence is uh, produced or populated by uh, conducting research and producing the necessary evidence to answer such burning questions. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. in the medical field, uh, the purpose of medical research is mainly to identify effective ways to prevent various diseases or to find the innovative cures for diseases or pro prolong life that is of an acceptable quality to individuals who are suffering from various diseases. And uh, so this, uh, in, in this context, uh, finding preventive, disease, preventive methodologies, the different methodologies, and uh, maybe uh, during the, this uh, pandemic of the COVID-19 uh, COVID that has been ongoing for about two years now, uh, uh, recently, there has been quite a lot of debate about uh, the vaccines that have come out, the effectiveness of the vaccines, um, uh, how are they working, and uh, how long would they protect the vaccinated uh, persons, for example. Uh, curing many diseases, uh, or every day there is a lot of uh, new research on new novel treatments, and uh, these are always uh, developed um, over quite a long uh, period of time. Uh, and so when we do find a cure for a new disease, then we consider including this cure in the various guidelines that are available for uh, treatment of various diseases. And then for uh, some diseases where um, maybe incomplete cure is not available, then the quality of life of these uh, patients are to be considered. And so how to prolong the life of the patients in an acceptable manner that is uh, satisfactory from a quality of life perspective. Uh, so what I'm going to focus on now is on how to conduct research. And so, the main step is what are the steps of research? And I think that's the overall, uh, that these steps, we will go through them uh, all through the workshop uh, or, and also all through the certificate program over one year. I think each and every one will go through all these steps. So the first step of conducting research is to identify a problem. And identifying the problem is very important because uh, we should have uh, criteria that should be fulfilled in order to come up with an appropriate problem for our research. And I'm going to go into each one of these into detail. The second step is proper data collection. The third step is presentation of my data and statistical analysis. And the fourth step is about interpretation of finding and writing up my report. So the problem. A problem is usually a topic that triggers the attention of the researcher. 
and uh, the researcher feels that there is more uh, to be known or found out about uh, this topic. And uh, as many of you have already referred to, uh, this is what is called the gap in knowledge. So I, here I'm going to ask a few questions. I want to identify what is meant by a research gap. So has anyone got any idea? Yes, a missing, it's a missing information. Uh, it's like a puzzle and you have a, a missing piece in this puzzle. Or maybe uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of information. I'm not sure about it and we need to verify it. Okay, very good. Any more, any more suggestions? I think it's an area not covered. Uh, through uh, past research or uh, uh, need to be clarified. Excellent. Any more suggestions? An unanswered question that needs to be investigated. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Any more additional? Also, when, also mm -hmm. when there are a lack of evidence or a, a limited evidence, so we need uh, strong evidence. Uh, by uh, conducting a new research. Okay, perfect. Any more additions? More like covered. missing information. Yes, perfect. So you do have something missing. So a problem is uh, that the researcher wants to see addressed by the research. That is what the research gap is about. It's the problem that the researchers want to be addressed by research. And as you said, Sarah, what is missing and what has not been addressed in previous research. So these two points are very, very important and identification of the gap is very important. I will talk about it in a minute. So actually what the research gap does is that it establishes the need or the importance or urgency and necessity of conducting the proposed research. So this has to be very evident in our research proposals uh, for many reasons that I will address in a few moments. So continuing on the research gap, I want to ask another question. How do we identify the research gap? Through the literature review. Okay, so you go through the literature review and then what? Identifying the gap uh, during uh, reading research, past research, uh, and uh, go to the point that not covered through this research. Okay, thank you. Usually, the limitations of the study, if you are reading an article or manuscript, the limitation recommendation mm -hmm. section there would give us um, some hint about the gap in research. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, uh, also conducting. No, Sarah, Sarah goes first and then and then you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So like in the medical field, the times gaps don't have to come from someone else's paper. A gap can mm -hmm. come from a practical aspect where you face challenges in your practical activities. Okay, very good. Yes. Uh, By conducting a systematic review, we can find uh, there, are, uh, there is a gap or, uh, or lack of evidence. So it is recommended to do extra research in that field. Excellent. Thank you, Ahmed. Yes. I want to add to uh, Dish Sarah what said uh, that mm -hmm. uh, practical uh, can we and when I face a problem in my practical uh, in my practice I can go to, to the literature review and find my uh, my answer uh, what I can mm -hmm. um, uh, see if uh, there is an answer in the uh, past research uh, it mm -hmm. will be double effort if I do the same research for what is done before. Uh, so uh, I, I will identify the point that I want to answer in my practice and then mm -hmm. uh, see if I can um, find my uh, answer in the literature. Uh, and if mm -hmm. not, it will be a gap. Definitely. Yes. Thank you, Esther. Yes. So we, we need to talk about three important points. The first point is uh, the lack of previous studies or insufficient. So lack of previous studies, uh, I think this is, you know, like something that may be very rare to find, that we don't find any study whatsoever that's been done in this field. But more, uh, more commonly, we would find lack of insufficient uh, 
uh, studies that are conducted. And maybe insufficient studies here could be defined as uh, something more of a geographic or population gap. So for example, um, maybe studies have been conducted in Europe and the US, and they haven't been conducted in maybe Sub-Saharan Africa or Southeast Asia or Australia. So it's it may be about or maybe about the geographic location in one in one's country. So maybe there has been a study in maybe a national study, but there is a, a part that is remote or uh, a group where uh, is excluded maybe from uh, transportation or from uh, ability to communicate with the general uh, uh, country, and so that group would have would have a, a geographic uh, location where maybe I have never seen what the prevalence of a disease is among that that specific uh, geographic area or among a population. Uh, for me, for example, maybe studies have been conducted among uh, women and uh, not enough studies have been conducted about, uh, as regards men, for example, breast cancer. Commonly, breast cancer is usually done among women. And uh, very few studies have been conducted on uh, male participants. Uh, for example, also adult studies have been conducted among adults, and then maybe nothing much has been conducted among children and so forth. So maybe we're talking about um, geographic gaps, population gaps, or just a gap in maybe in my practice, for example, like uh, what uh, Sarah has uh, uh, contributed. Uh, the second point is about the lack of knowledge. And maybe lack of knowledge here, I would like to uh, talk about um, that uh, the data that the results of studies have been analyzed in a way that have come up with a certain conclusion. And maybe the say these these results were not analyzed in another perspective or from another perspective. And so maybe there is controversy controversy about uh, a certain area. There is um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, another uh, uh, perspective that I'd like to look at. And so that's also another point that we, we may look at. So we may come up with, we find when, when we go through the literature that we have conflicting theories or disagreements on uh, certain uh, treatment modalities. And so that would, uh, that would uh, identify a, a knowledge gap. Uh, the third part is, uh, I think, uh, what one of the participants have already mentioned this, limitations that have been reported in previous studies. And this is also very important uh, because we can build on these limitations and try and fill the gaps from uh, these previous studies. Now, moving on to the sources of research ideas and problem identification. Where do you think research ideas come from? Journals. Okay, yes. Um, maybe the practical area or the clinical area. Okay, yes. By critical thinking or whenever you face any problem, so you realize that uh, this, this is a gap and we need to fill. Okay. Uh, what else? Mm. Recommendation of uh, previously published uh, articles. Okay, yes. Ex expert opinion. Mm -hmm. Expert opinions, yes, thank you. Yeah. What else? Upcoming clinical issues in the practice or any practice issues. Yes, very good. Perfect. So actually, there may be observations during our daily clinical practice or daily activities. Uh, we could go through the literature, uh, newspapers, circulars, whatever. We find an interesting point that we, we, we have uh, a passion about. Uh, we might hear something that may be formal or informal, and then we would like to uh, go in depth 
more and find more about that. So problem formulation, when I talk about problem identification, I talk about two points, problem, problem formulation. I need to clearly define my study problem or my research problem. And this has to be written out very clearly. And I can use the, uh, the word finer to uh, identify uh, my problem identification. Uh, by finer, I mean that uh, the study or the research is feasible, can be conducted through my resources, through my uh, uh, time and so forth. It's an interesting topic for the researcher. I'm interested in it. I find that this is uh, something that uh, I would enjoy working on because actually research is a very uh, tedious uh, process. It takes time, it takes uh, a lot of perseverance. And so we really have to be interested in the topic. And then uh, coming up uh, with a novel idea, and that would be, uh, would come out from the uh, research gap. And then talking about the ethical implications of uh, conducting my research Am I abiding by the national and international guidelines uh, when I am conducting this research? And it has to be relevant to my community. So I cannot be conducting research uh, that is not uh, relevant to the community that I'm working in. So we talking about research formulation and then research justification. We need to justify why the problem is important and can you convince others of its importance? And here it's important to, to emphasize that when I justify the importance of the study uh, and the problem, I can uh, seek funding for my research. And this is identified through the gap. Now, moving on to the problem identification, we need to identify our specific objective. Now, this is a very important point. We need to answer a few questions. What am, I con what am I studying? Who are my research participants? To whom are we uh, applying various interventions? When, where, and what are we conduct conducting? And uh, it's very important that we fulfill uh, our objectives or write them up in a smart manner, in a manner that is very specific, and measurable. I'd like to emphasize the word here, measurable here. Very important to, uh, that, I, that we all have this uh, uh, broad in our minds because at the end of the study, these are the specific, these specific objectives should be reflected in my results section. And so they should be measurable. I should be able to measure what I'm trying to find out they should be attainable within a, a relevant uh, time period, and uh, they should be relevant to my topic and my community. So, um, uh, then we are moving on. Excuse me. Any questions? Uh, excuse me, I have a question, please, regarding yes, the, please. the feature. Uh, the attainable feature of uh, specific objectives. Sometimes yes. uh, when the, the, the problem is novel and we lack uh, knowledge uh, about it, we don't know if we, uh, our research pr procedure will, will, will have a, a satisfactory outcome or not. So uh, uh, what, to what extent uh, could we go uh, or could we predict the attainability of the of, uh, of the research project uh, uh, research uh, project? Okay, so when I'm talking about attainability, I'm talking about that on the ground, I can implement my study and collect data about it. So, I have already uh, been able to implement the study. I have been able to recruit my participants. I've been able to ask them the relevant questions that I need to ask. I have been able to collect the samples that I need to collect. If I'm doing qualitative research, I can do my focus group discussions. I can call, uh, yeah, bring all the relevant uh, stakeholders on board. 
know their perspectives. So it's attainable in that it can be uh, concluded in, in that manner. Okay? It's, not, okay? it's not regarding the, the results. It's, uh... No, no, no. Because results, you know, results can come, can be uh, positive results or could be negative results. And negative results are also very important to find out. You know, you, if you have a negative result, that's something that we all need to find out about. It. Uh, it's important to, to, to report also negative results. Okay. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm getting the impression that it's, um, uh, it's like feasibility except applied to an objective? Yes. Yes. You can, you can uh, easily conduct that research. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any more questions? Okay. Then we are moving on to the study questions and hypothesis. And uh, this is also an important point. Uh, we need to write down what our study questions are. So what, what questions will the study answer by the end of the research? And what are the suppositions of your research study? So, and that is what would bring on the hypotheses of our study. So this is just a very simple uh, example. So if you have maybe two drugs on the market, uh, maybe you'd like to answer, is drug A more effective in drug B than drug B in treating a certain condition uh, or disease? So that would be your research question. Uh, uh, other questions, depending on whatever you are, uh, con you are uh, interested in, they may be uh, related to prevention, they may be related to cure, and so forth. Now, the study hypothesis is usually an assumed answer to the study question. So it's what you hypothesize, uh, and that's what uh, we will use later on when we conduct the necessary statistical analysis uh, that we are testing these hypotheses. Uh, I'm not sure how many of us uh, are familiar with the term hypothesis. Can I have a show of hands or maybe uh, just um, let me know if you're unfamiliar with it? So everyone is okay with, my, with hypothesis? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, that's fine. So the study has to either prove or disprove the study hypothesis. And in any study, uh, the research hypothesis usually depends on the current state of knowledge and technology in the specific field that we are working on. The research begins with a hypothesis about the relationship between two occurrences, especially if we are conducting analytic research or clinical research. So, for example, people who smoke are more likely to get lung cancer than people who don't. And another hypothesis is maybe postmenopausal women treated with hormonal replacement therapy are less likely to have a myocardial infection, uh, infarction attacks than women who are not. Uh, these are called the study hypothesis. Uh, so, going back to my steps, I have here two very important steps. The problem, my problem identification, and from that I have uh, come up with my research question that has arised from the research gap. I have written up my hypothesis or the study questions that I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on writing up my specific objectives in a, ma in a smart manner. Uh, and so- Can I have a question, yes, please? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, should I write all uh, hypotheses and the study question, or I can uh, substitute the hypothesis with study question according to the nature of the study? If it is descriptive, like uh, I'm describing something or I'm assessing uh, something new, do I have to? Uh, well, there is, there is no hypothesis. No, you you wouldn't have a hypothesis in a descriptive yes. study. 
Okay. The study would not have a hypothesis, actually. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So I just want to show people that here, I have uh, an arrow that has, uh, uh, an arrow goes up uh, backwards and forwards. So as I write up my, my research question, I have identified the gap, I'm writing up my objectives, I might refine my research question, I might refine my hypothesis and so forth. So, uh, and that's what we are all doing at this stage. We're all writing up uh, a preliminary write-up of what we want to do. And we may change our minds, we may change the research question, we may change objectives and so forth. So in this stage, we are going back and forth between the research question, the research of the specific objectives and the hypothesis if we do have one. Excuse yes, me. Yes. 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 I can't see behind where to raise my hands, but still okay. on the issue of the research questions. I just mm -hmm. want to some clarification on mm -hmm. when you're trying to go for the main objective vis-a-vis -vis the research questions or the hypothesis. Can the main objective also be su substitute the main study question? Uh no, the study question is a study question. And out of that, you would get the study aim or the research aim that you, 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 you are aiming to achieve. And that would be further uh, clarified in your specific object. So a research question has to be a question and you have to have it, uh, especially if you are going to uh, go for an analytic design where you have a hypothesis, it is very important. Okay. So ideally what we're saying is to have my main objective and as well have such question before I specify yeah. objectives. Yes, but basically you have a research question first. That's yeah. the first thing that you will do, the research question. Out of that research question, you will have your uh, research aim. And out of that aim, you will clarify the specific objectives that you would uh, work on to uh, reach an answer to these specific objectives, and that would ultimately answer your overall research question. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let, me, let, me, uh, let me just emphasize that is that, um, um, as we have just said, you have to question, but sometimes it might be more helpful to, uh, to think about that, okay, the question tells you what you want to answer, okay. okay? And and depending on what you want to answer, that will form, help you formulate your objectives because your objectives really is uh, uh, um, um, congruent or essentially what answers you want, right? What answers you want and, and now you define your objectives and now you do the research to get the answers or, or to uh, satisfy your objectives. The, the, the issue is that you have a re research question, uh, but you don't want to conquer the world <laughs> with your research question. So you got to narrow it down and, and a big problem that I've seen is that people, uh, uh, you know, write down eight different objectives. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll talk more about that. Okay, so think about question, answer, objectives. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, excuse me, Professor. May I? Yes. Yes. Uh, please. So, uh, to uh, a research is something that addresses the knowledge gap, right? So, um. Uh, so the, the uh, those descriptive studies do are they also include in research? Of course they are. Yes, they are. Of course, these descriptive okay. studies are there because you have a research gap, and from these descriptive studies you can move on after conducting a descriptive study. You can uh, formulate hypotheses, different hypotheses, and move on to analytic studies. 
I see. Thank you. Uh, let me um, let me just ask, Rahab, what do you think? I think the word descriptive is um, uh, probably not a good word to use because it. Uh, uh, I sometimes I use it myself, uh, but descriptive to me sounds like you're just observing things. Now, now there's observation studies as well, uh, but I think um, uh, I would rather, now descriptive studies, are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, usually qualitative research. And I would, instead of using the word descriptive, I think, um, what do you think? I think it might be better to use the word exploratory studies. Uh, in qualitative research? Yeah, right. Because I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess in qualitative research, yes. I mean, do you do descriptive studies in um, quantitative research? Um, yes, yes, it's uh, in the what algorithm. Kind of, what kind of descriptive the, studies for quantitative in, research? You have the uh, cross-sectional surveys, the case report and case series, and the ecological study. I'm, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. what? Ecological studies, case series, case reports, cross-sectional surveys, all of these are descriptive. Agree. Well, uh, again, I... In, in I, a sense that you don't have a hypothesis uh, where you will test the hypothesis by comparison of two. Well, uh, uh, record studies could be testing hypotheses. You're what? getting data that's uh, retrospective instead of prospective. Ex excuse me, what type of study? Well, you mentioned record studies. No, I said uh, case reports and case series and cross-sectional surveys and then ecological studies. Well, you're obtaining data. Yes. And, and what do you do with that data? Just describe or, or do you... Yeah. Well, if you're just going to just present the frequencies and uh, describe the participants in uh, simple frequencies with no comparison, with no statistical testing, these are called descriptive studies. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Prof, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have an opinion on this, but before that, uh, I thought maybe I get a little bit of clarification I thought uh, <clears throat> what, um, sorry, I um, have a little bit of throat irritation. What Rehab was presenting is the general uh, overview of a research process in which she mentioned the observational study as one the form of study. Uh, but from what Prof you're saying, it's like uh, the presentation ought to be focusing on the area we are going to be engaging in the next one year that are much more in, involving. Uh, however, in my opinion, and like been said by other colleagues here, uh, research of two probes, the observational aspect and the experimental aspect, which the experimental could also be quasi experimental. And in the observational, you could have the normal descriptive cross-sectional you could have the cohort and then you have the case control. And in the experimental, you now have the uh, um, quasi-experimental and, uh, and so forth, in which this also has uh, levels of relevance to information generated in which observational, descriptive, and cross-sectional are just uh, basic given idea that can further be in explored through uh, analytical process uh, then you move on to uh, cohort and then uh, 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 case control studies and then experimental is the highest uh, aspect of that. So uh, what I thought uh, the presentation of Ria was going is just giving us like an introductory, this different level, but in this, for the purpose of this study, we'll be engaging in much more uh, engaging aspect like the probably experimental, probably cohort, case control and all that, that give much more uh, outcome that are uh, uh, much more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, valid, validity and so forth. 
that's what the message I was getting from Ria's presentation. Thank yes, you. that's very true, Emmanuel. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Yes, that's true. And, okay. uh, and as we move on to uh, further on in the program, I think that there will be a, a good time for us to discuss each and every design uh, its strengths and its weaknesses, and uh, how uh, which one would we prefer over another if we were going to conduct the research using a specific design. So thank you very much for uh, bringing it all together. Dr. Rehab? Yes, please. Hi, um, you mentioned earlier something about a pyramid. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact term you used, but at some point in time, could you speak more about that? Thank you. Excuse me, that's what? I didn't hear the question, Jeanette. Sorry, I was saying that um, earlier you had mentioned something about a pyramid in terms of I the think, evidence. evidence. The evidence. Yes. Yes. So, you know, okay. if at some point you can um, you can talk more about that, please. Thanks. Uh, I'll, uh, maybe at the end I can uh, share you something with you, but it's not in this presentation, but I can uh, bring it up. Yeah. Yes, I, sure. will, I can. Do That's that. fine. Thank you. Okay. You're more than welcome. We could, um, we could add that to the discussion forum. How's that? Perfect. Excellent. Right? That's the purpose of the forum. Okay. Okay. Sure. Listen, when, when we leave, in, a mm -hmm. few, in just a few hours today, uh, that doesn't mean we stop thinking about this stuff until tomorrow, okay? Uh, yeah. This should uh, generate more thoughts, more ideas, more changes mm -hmm. in our proposals. So uh, maybe um, we could um, uh, talk about the uh, uh, evidence pyramid Put that on the floor. How's that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thanks. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, shall I continue? Everyone is okay Anything? with this? Yes. yes, please. Yes, thank you. Okay. Super. Okay. Now, for proper data collection, this is the second uh, step uh, in conducting my research. Uh, I, we have to select the proper study type. Uh, so what study am I going to use? Uh, what methodology is going to be a, a cohort study, a case control study, a clinical trial, a programmatic research, I'm going to implement something in the in the clinic. So what's the appropriate study type? I should be able to uh, identify the different study types and uh, uh, identify the strengths and weaknesses within each type and uh, why I'm using a st this, this type over another one. Uh, knowing the strengths and limitations of each study uh, design will um, help me when I write up my study uh, at the end uh, because I would uh, initially know my limitations from the beginning. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we have to select uh, my participants uh, in an appropriate manner by uh, a proper sampling technique. Uh, of course, uh, there are many sampling techniques. There are um, uh, probability sampling, uh, where the participants, uh, are, where, where the researcher has a uh, complete list of uh, participants or what we call a study frame. And uh, from that, participants are selected randomly uh, by random allocation. Uh, and there is, of course, the non-probability sampling techniques, like uh, one of the proposals of concept notes was talking about snowball sampling. And this is uh, one of the well, very important also uh, technique in uh, selecting uh, participants uh, for recruitment into the study. And of course, we have to decide on the sample size. The sample size is very important because it is uh, calculated. Uh, there are many uh, free uh, 
software available that we can use to calculate the minimum sample size that would give us the uh, evidence uh, that is required uh, from uh, a study. Now, of course, when I'm talking about sample size, I'm talking about uh, uh, research uh, that uh, will employ quantitative techniques because uh, sample size in qualitative methodology uh, has um, another, another perspective. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we have to select the tools for data collection. Uh, how am I going to collect my data? Am I going to use a questionnaire? Am I going to use observation checklists? Am I going to use uh, laboratory samples or clinical examination? So what are the tools that I'm going to be using for collection of my data? Uh, so here I'm going to show you the, 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 the diagram that I have. And here again, uh, as you can see, the, the arrows uh, are going back and forth. We can still go back when I'm choosing my design, when I'm choosing the sample size and type, I can still go back and refine my problem and refine my objectives and refine my hypothesis. Uh, following that, we will uh, choose our study tools and our study definitions and designs. And we may want to go for a small pilot testing of our procedures and tools. And here, uh, uh, this, is, this may be important in many studies because I may not be sure uh, that the questionnaire will be answered in the manner that I anticipated to be answered with. I'm unsure if the questionnaire is clear to the participants or not, is the language appropriate or not. So we may go for a pilot testing of the procedures and tools. And according to the results of this small pilot testing, I would uh, work on uh, modifications at all the levels from problem identification, hypothesis, and study specific objectives, all to all the way down to my study tools one more time. Uh, as soon as I go for collection of my data, here the arrow has changed. It's only one way. So as soon as I start collecting my data, I cannot go back and change anything in all of the above uh, points that I have referred to. And uh, of course, uh, here we are talking about quality control and supervision during data collection. Now, uh, after I collect my data, of course, I will have it uh, uh, put into my database or my computer using Excel or whatever database I'm going to use. And then I'm going to transfer that onto my statistical software and start summarizing and interpreting my data. Uh, here, I'm going to talk about uh, three important points. I'm sure that uh, Dr. Samar will, uh, will add a lot of depth and wealth to this uh, slide when she does uh, her presentations on data analysis. Uh, when we want to use tables, these are just for uh, showing the data uh, details um, that are needed. When I go for or choose graphs to present my uh, data, I'm only use going for impressions. And when I use parameters, these are precise mathematical summaries used for comparisons, like, for example, mean and standard deviations and so forth. Um, in interpretation, I would like to emphasize two important points. In interpretation of data is based on knowledge and experiences, and it changes the data that I have collected from my research into understandable and usable information so that it can be applied in the setting where I have conducted my and here, uh, after I have presented my data uh, and uh, analyzed it uh, statistically, I interpret that and report that, referring back to my hypothesis and my specific objectives. So these results should be interpreted and reported in line with my study questions, study hypothesis, and specific objectives. Mm -hmm. 
now, at the end of the study, we would come up with recommendations, and these recommendations would be based from the results of your research. A very important quote I'd like to end my uh, presentation by saying that every path to a new understanding begins in confusion. And uh, that's where we are all standing at the moment. We all have these great ideas. We want to work on them. And we're still figuring out what, uh, what is the yeah. research yeah. question? Where is the research gap? What is our hypothesis? What are, are our specific uh, objectives? And how are we going to implement the research using the various uh, tools that we will identify? So uh, at that, I would like to thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions, I would be happy to answer the questions. Yes, I have a question. Uh, do we need to calculate sample size for qualitative research as for quantitative research? Uh, for qualitative research, uh, I'm not a qualitative research expert, but uh, to the best of my understanding that qualitative research should keep on collecting data until you have satisfied uh, what you're looking for. So you keep on going for focus group discussions or in-depth in the interviews until you get the same response over and over again. And so that's the saturation point where that would be enough for your qualitative research. I'm but sure initially, I, I initially we, do, do, we will not know what will be the output of our results. So how can we... Uh, decide that we will require more data or not? Uh, as long as you're receiving uh, new response and new re perspectives about what you're asking about in qualitative research, then you should continue digging further until you get more or less the same answers over and over again. Uh, I think Henry can help also on this, on this point. He's yeah, done a lot of qualitative uh, research. Uh, that's, that's a very good question. And in fact, uh, just yesterday, uh, uh, some of the um, participants in my other training program submitted a protocol to the IRB qualitative research interview study, and they put down 20 to 25 interviews. And the uh, uh, research ethics committee asked, uh, well, is, uh, how did you decide on 2025? Uh, research ethics committees, um, uh, always want to know the sample size, okay, ahead of time. And in, in an interview study, um, you could only um, uh, guesstimate what you think that that might be. And, and so we, uh, we, we answered back and said, this is uh, what we think, how many we need, and maybe more, maybe less depending on reaching data saturation, uh, as perhaps uh, saturation. So meaning that uh, it's very important uh, to do, when you do an interview study to analyze as you get these interviews. Uh, so you could um, understand whether you're getting any more data, any more different types of data back. And if you find that uh, we've heard that before. Once, once you've reached a certain interviews and you're not getting any new information, that's data saturation and you stop. And it could be 10 interviews, it could be 40 interviews, depending on the uh, type of question you're asking. So you could only uh, tell the IRB uh, what, uh, uh, what, what you think the number would be and you have to use the keyword data saturation uh, for your interview. For your as, um, as I read the proposal of uh, a Senderman, uh, adoption of modern contraception in the extended postpartum period of Myanmar reproductive age women. In uh, this concept paper, uh, they decided they will, uh, they will interview only 12 participants. So are these enough? 12, only 12 participants? Uh, well, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's reserve that question to the breakout room and we'll give you guidance on that. It, it, uh, it may be enough. Again, depending on the complexity of the situation. Uh, also depends on uh, also if you're 
doing an interview study with different types of groups, different genders, different age groups. Uh, if, if you're having that type of complexity, then you may, uh, which I don't necessarily recommend, but you could do that. But if you're interviewing, if you expect different responses between different genders, different age groups, uh, different religions, uh, then obviously you're going to gather a lot of different ideas. So you may need uh, more, uh, more of a sample size if you expect that uh, uh, your different groups will generate different ideas. So we'll talk more about that. Good, good question. Thank you. Okay, good, great. All right, that was a, that was a great uh, introduction. Uh, let me, um, uh, I, uh, uh, I have a, a short presentation uh, that has been made a lot shorter by what uh, Rahab uh, discussed in her presentation. And so uh, let me thank her for, for, for that. Uh, and so let me just, uh, I, I, I just want to uh, spend uh, a few words just expanding on, on the um, on developing the research proposal. And then, and then we'll have a, a break for 15 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, uh, a coffee break on you, okay? And um, one thing I like about these Zoom meetings, it's much less expensive uh, than, than the face-to-face uh, -face meetings, okay? Uh, but I promise you, uh, the goal is that one time we will meet face-to-face -face at some conference uh, somewhere in the world, okay? And it's on me, okay? But until then, you know, uh, you have to pay for yourself, sorry. Uh, okay, so let me... Um, uh, let me uh, share my screen here. Let's see. Um, Thank you, Dr. Rehab, for such a nice presentation. Thank you so much. Right, yes, Thank round you. of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meet yourself so she can hear that. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Rehab. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen, okay. Okay, so, um, as I said before, a lot, a lot of the information in this slide presentation uh, has, um, has already been discussed. Uh, and so I'm going to go quickly through a lot of these slides. Uh, and so don't, don't feel like you have to uh, copy everything down. Again, these, all the PowerPoints will be uploaded to the uh, Moodle site, okay? And, and again, this is being reported. So again, uh, we talked, uh, we have talked a lot about the research question, objectives and hypothesis and, and um, all that um, uh, good stuff. And you know, we talked about research, so, uh, the definition of research, what does research mean to you, why, why are you taking this course? Uh, have you conducted research before? And, and then we talked about the, the purpose of research and this slide shows uh, a definition of research that you all discuss with Rahab, uh, systematic objective analysis of controlled observations uh, that may lead to development of generalization principles, theories, 
resulting in prediction of possible ultimate control of events. That's a long definition, but essentially it's to fulfill a gap of knowledge. And it could be uh, uh, controlled observations. That's more like quantitative research, uh, but uh, there is qualitative research uh, as, as well, which is in that control observation. That's why research ethics committees don't like to review qualitative research because there's so many things left unsaid. Okay, think about it. We just talked about the sample size. The IRBs want to know the sample size. We can't tell you the sample size. They want to know the outcome variable. Uh, the outcome of the research. Well, we don't know exactly what the outcome of qualitative research will be because it depends on what the people tell you. Uh, and, and, and so uh, that's why uh, uh, there's like uh, uh, a thing between social scientists and research ethics committees because most research ethics committees are biomedical uh, research ethics committee, but We'll, we'll say more about that throughout the year. Uh, so how to develop and evaluate the research question. So essentially, uh, we talked about what is a research question? How does one develop one? We talked about that. Uh, we talked about how one evaluates one. Uh, and, and we have talked about the finer criteria. And as I said before, the most important letter in, in, in that word is the F, feasible. Uh, and then I would say after that is novel and relevant. Uh, I would assume that anything you pick is interesting to you or else why would you have picked it, right? So, uh, so let me just, um, so here, I think this slide, I wanted to get to this slide. So three related concepts here is the topic that you picked. You picked the topic and uh, I'm going to ask you uh, about the topic in just a few seconds. So once you pick a topic from that topic, you want to know, well, what's the problem? Uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the problem within the topic or what's the gap? Uh, and, and then from, from that gap, uh, now you have the research question. Uh, now, the, the, your research is not, again, you don't want to take on the world, okay? Uh, uh, you don't want to solve the whole problem. That's, that's what you devote your career to in solving the problem, helping to solve the problem, but your specific project Will be focused. Will be focused on a question that addresses that addresses part of the problem, not the whole problem. Okay. So again, you want to narrow down. So it's it's like a reverse triangle. You start with the topic, and now you narrow it down to the research question, and you narrow it down even further with the objectives. Okay, and, and so this is part of writing for a grant, actually. Uh, you start uh, writing the grant and telling your audience, telling the people who you want to give you monies, okay, what the topic is and what the problem and what are you going to do in this project, okay? So think uh, about these three related concepts. Um, so let me um, let me ask you. We we talked. Rahab asked you how does one pick pick a topic, uh, and what I want to ask you on the chat box. Okay, uh, why don't you write down how did you determine the topic that you chose? You all, how did you determine the topic that you chose? What led you to that topic? You all picked the topic, so in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just take a few seconds? I want to know what, how you chose your topic. Okay. 
Okay, based on my passion through a PubMed search. Observation, what, what do you mean by observation? Abir? Yeah, yeah, I noticed a problem. For example, I proposed about a uh, proposal about uh, student advising. And, uh, and I really know in our college, it's not the quality of this process is not, it is not measured at all. They are delivering or providing student advising to students, but they did not assess the quality of this process. Okay, all right, good. Uh, yeah, there's said problem based in the clinical area. Yeah. Uh, okay, latest news. Okay, all right, good. All right, on my interest. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Jeanette, you said, I wanted to know how a particular method would, you mean a, 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 a method of teaching? I, I take it, Jeanette? Yes, that's correct, a method of okay. teaching, sorry. Okay, very good, excellent, all right. Uh, all right, these are great answers. Uh, okay. All right, so it, uh, uh, I, I think uh, we're getting the sense that uh, this is like uh, very personal, right? Uh, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and hence, uh, the first answer I saw, it's my passion. Uh, Professor Shuar said, it's my passion. Very personal, your topic. Uh, and and it, isn't that so much, much better than a professor giving you a topic of research to do, right? Uh, you join a professor's research program and, and you do something that he or she is interested in doing. You all are doing this from a personal interest, experiences and in literature. Uh, okay, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, right, yes, face the problem and doing pain scores in, in your particular, <laughs> I mean, this is all wonderful answers, so, uh, this way, I, I know you're going to stick with it because you're invested in it personally in these topics. This is what is motivating you, is driving you, and, and that is how you picked the topic. And, and, and part of picking the topic is that you recognize there was a research problem. Okay. And, and from that, you have to generate or what part of that problem uh, now you want to uh, transform that into a question. What, what, do, what do you want to ask to, to have answered? Okay. And, 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 and so that's the starting point yeah, uh, of, of picking a topic and, and the problem is what, what is uh, what is troubling you about what you see in your experiences? Uh, okay, very good, excellent. Uh, so yeah, existing literature, social concerns, pop, well, popular issues, uh, you know, like uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, preferences, you could brainstorm. And yeah, on the bottom of the list, you could ask, Ask your mentor, okay? <laughs> when every, everything else fails. And uh, so uh, the other thing is that you may want to question the validity of commonly held uh, beliefs, question relationships, uh, for example, direction of causality. Uh, there may be an argument in the literature about uh, uh, about how to approach or treat a certain disease, or there may be an argument on 
perspectives of a certain population about a certain uh, uh, topic that you want to uh, answer. So you uh, delve into the literature and find out, you know, if, if there's controversy, then that means uh, you need to do more research about it. Um, so the, um, let me just, um, um, so again, the importance of the research question is essentially is the starting point. Everything flows from the research question. We're talking about your objectives, your methodology, and how you're going to analyze it uh, during the time period of the study. And let me uh, let me just move ahead here. Oh, so this uh, so here uh, essentially you have a question about the real world, and then there's a problem. And now you want to solve that problem. You have your design, the operational plan. You do observations of the real world or an intervention, or you do interview study or survey study. You get the data, and then you have some, some now conclusions about the real world. I like to say that um, the definition of research is that you're investigating some phenomenon in the world that needs further explanation. I like to use the word some phenomenon in the world that needs further explanation. Uh, and so, you again, you're looking at a phenomenon. Okay, now, uh, uh, I just have a few more minutes. Uh, so, Research question between qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative ask uh, uh, the question why or how. Uh, and I'm sorry, qualitative ask why or how. Uh, what governs individuals' actions, decisions, behaviors, values? Okay, you're looking at really behaviors. Well, why do they react in this way? Uh, how, uh, how, how do they do things? So why do they do research misconduct? Whereas quantitative asks more where, why, and what, essentially looking at causality of actions, okay? And frequently, uh, we, I, I know it could go both ways, but I think more likely you do the qualitative exploratory that now, now you want to quantify what you have explored, if you want to think about it that way. So the, the research question will be formulated somewhat differently between the two types of, of research. Uh, again, we talked about the characteristics of a good research question, you know, the finer criteria, uh, and we'll talk about that as we evaluate your research question. And again, uh, the most, um, you know, is it feasible uh, in terms of getting the number of subjects, your expertise, the funding, and is it possible to measure or uh, manipulate the variables? We may have a dis disagreement about novel and relevant, uh, but we should talk about the relevance and definitely the feasibility. Okay. Uh, weaknesses in research proposals, usually uh, there may be uh, an insufficient importance of the problem. Uh, the hypothesis may be unsound. The problem is probably more complex than what you realize, or maybe you've taken on, you want to take on the world, and you just can't do that. Uh, the approach, the methods may not be suitable, uh, and you may have to re redesign uh, your methods. Again, many times editors, journals, reviews will say you didn't use the right methodology, and now what do you do? Have to 
do the whole project over again. Uh, you may not have the adequate experience or the ability, but we, we will help you with that as much as we can. But if we can, we'll tell you sooner rather than later, okay? And uh, uh, so, uh, because the whole idea of this program is to advance your ability to do different types of research. So hopefully we'll be able to um, um, give you the ability to do the research. Okay, and we talked about the hypothesis. So let me uh, run, let me get to the last slide. Uh, and, um, oh, um, yeah, in terms of hypothesis, I think we discussed that in qualitative research, there is no hypothesis. The purpose of qualitative research is to generate a hypothesis. Many times the research ethics committee will ask, what's your hypothesis? We don't know. That's why we're doing the qualitative research to generate the, it's exploratory. Okay, all right. Okay, so, and we talked about the research objectives. Uh, the major thing I want to talk about that is, uh, is the, uh, is it measurable? And the most important thing here, here's the objectives of this workshop. Okay, and, and well, um, so you have to use verbs. Every objective has a verb. And you have to use verbs that's measurable, okay? I could uh, uh, measure whether you can explain something or be aware of something or whether you're able to develop something or evaluate or discuss. I cannot measure your understanding of something. I can measure you explaining something. I could assess that. Uh, uh, explaining or evaluating, I cannot measure understanding, okay? So I don't want to see that verb anywhere in, 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 in a uh, specific object, objective. Another verb that's good is identify. Uh, maybe at some point we'll talk about Bloom's taxonomy of, of uh, cognitive objectives which is mainly used in teaching, um, but the same thing goes with objectives. It has to be measurable when you list your objectives. We'll talk more about that as you list your objectives. Um, and uh, so objectives, what you intend to do in answering the research question. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. And, uh, and, and again, well, the objectives will uh, between qualitative and quantitative. Uh, and uh, so in qualitative, we're looking at uh, more about behavior and perceptions. Well, let me just here. In quantitative, we use uh, some example objectives, determine the knowledge and attitudes determine the factors associated with research behaviors. Whereas in qualitative, we use the word mainly, we want to explore the experiences of moral distress in nurses taking care of patients with COVID-19, or explore the occurrence of mental health issues in the population doing public health emergencies. Okay, so those are the different types of objectives. And uh, so uh, in quantitative, the, we need endpoints to answer the objectives, whereas in qualitative, the endpoints are open-ended because again, we don't know what to expect when we saw our interview process. And this is, uh, uh, here is the research process, the overview. And let me just say that, uh, the first part, and you'll see this more when maybe uh, is the um, uh, is all about developing the research question uh, related to your topic. So essentially, 
this is the whole process and where we're at this point here, the focus of inquiry where we're developing the research question. That's the major focus for the next two months is developing the research question, the objectives and writing the proposal. And then this is uh, stuff about data collection, analyzing and writing up the manuscript. So we're at this part of the research process. Uh, and, and that's the most important part. Uh, well, they're all important parts, but one leads to the other. And we have to um, develop a good research question. So let me end by uh, some questions for reflection as you uh, go into the breakout rooms in, in a few minutes after after the break. Uh, I want you to, and, and when you, uh, and the next uh, 18 hours before we start the workshop again, uh, how refined is the question we wrote down earlier. Is it focused enough or not focused uh, uh, or is it too broad? And, and in what ways do you think you can improve your research questions? A lot of you already have taken uh, the uh, 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 advice of, of your peers about uh, how, how you may want to improve your research question. We already started that process, okay? And uh, in your view, what are the requirements of a good research question? Uh, we're gonna sashay uh, in the next day or two into, uh, or today even, be in, into the objectives. So again, think about, uh, well, whether, uh, again, why well, should I put down here, uh, how feasible is your project? Uh, do you need to make it more narrow? Uh, um, or again, you may want to change your topic if, if you don't think it's feasible, even with changing just the research design, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. And with that, let me say thank you again for your attention. I hope this is uh, all uh, uh, good groundwork uh, for for moving ahead. With, let me just say that uh, I think uh, uh, the the topics uh, that a lot of you have chosen is just really well done. Uh, all of you have chosen uh, good topics. The question is. Uh, let's, we need to talk more about whether it's feasible and and and, and more focused, and, and and we'll see uh, how we could, you know, manipulate. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Any any final thoughts? If I may, I just have a quick question. Sure. With respect to the um, objectives that you were saying we should use the terms for quantitative research. What about um, investigate? Is that not acceptable or is that not? What, what about what? What about investigate, to investigate as an objective for quantitative research? Would that be acceptable? Uh, I, you know, I you said so to determine. Depending yeah. on, uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of those words are somewhat similar, investigate, determine. To evaluate, to assess, to investigate. Yes, we can. I think we can use this word. Yeah, I, I mean, the, um, uh, it's, it's more important to identify. what you're in, investigating. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there's, um, uh, if you look at Bloom's taxonomy, if, if you... Uh, yes, I think many of you know exactly. what I'm talking about, different cognitive levels, and there's different verbs for each level, okay? Identify Correct. is at the bottom scale of cognitive learning, uh, whereas evaluate and synthesize is the highest level, okay? Um, and, and so uh, what I'm trying to say is different verbs that are on the same level. 
investigate, determine, okay? Uh, uh, but there is a difference between investigate and identify. That makes sense. So, yes, yes it does. Um, uh, but I, the point I was making to understand uh, is a little bit too loosey goosey uh, uh, for, for, for me. Uh, and uh, so, I, I think that the devil is in the detail. So let's see what types of objectives we come up with um, and, 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 and see if, if we're using the right verb. How's that? Thank you. Okay, all right. This is, we're, we're on the uh, uh, road of discovery here, exploration, okay? We, uh, I I would I I would uh, imagine that uh, we haven't thought about these types of concepts as we write these things down. So let's take a, a break for ten minutes uh, till um, I'm going to say nine thirty or half uh, at the half of the hour. Um, right. Okay. And then um, uh, when you come back. I'm going to put you into, we're going to have four breakout groups. Uh, and when you come back, I'll, I'll put you into those breakout um, uh, groups. Yes, right. These presentations, I already said that we'll put on the website. Okay? No worries. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, good. So, um, it's, if you want to, you know, uh, the, the login information, the Zoom details uh, will be the same every day, every hour, every workshop, okay? These Zoom details will be the same. So if you want to shut off your computer or whatever, you could do that and just reconnect. Or if you just want to uh, mute yourself and turn off the video, that's fine. So 10 minutes, we'll come back, okay? I'm going to start to put you in breakout rooms. Okay, very good. Uh, we are okay. We have, we have left our room, and now we are we are all in the main session. I realize that because I'm in the main session too. Um, the um, the other two rooms are finishing up. Okay, I'm gonna close the room in just a, a few minutes. Uh, and I, um, I got a really good sense that a lot of good progress was made in the uh, other rooms. Uh, a lot of good discussions about the protocols. Okay, I think everyone is back. So, uh, um, I was visiting all the rooms and I got the impression that some really good progression, progress was being made with these protocols. Um, did, did I get the right impression? Uh, very good. Uh, I hate to, I, you know, close the rooms, but uh, we, uh, uh, you all been doing a good job, and we were discussing right before everybody came back um, that uh, what I'm going to do is um, we've been having a wonderful large discussion for. Um, among uh, 20 plus people, uh, which was very active uh, and, and a good way to start. Uh, but now I'm going to um, uh, construct four different um, discussion forums. 
um, to replicate the breakout rooms and where you could um, continue the discussions until tomorrow uh, and uh, where one could uh, post articles uh, that you could uh, find on the internet. Uh, and also, um, I think the, um, uh, uh, every, everyone should be um, revising their concept paper uh, uh, based on information you gathered. Uh, and, uh, you know, now we're looking at, um, you know, something like two pages or a page and a half where you have a, a more focused uh, introduction and uh, scientific objectives and methodology and expected uh, impact so that we could all start looking at it. Um, so we're progressing towards uh, the, the framework now of a full proposal. Um, so again, uh, uh, the introduction should capsulize what your research question is. And, and actually, uh, Isabel uses this uh, analogy or metaphor frequently. Uh, tell me if I get this right or wrong, Isabel. With the introduction, you start with the base of an upside triangle, right? And you, know, you introduce general stuff, and then you narrow it down to what the heck are you doing now with this research? What's your focus? What's, what is your research question? All right, so you start on the general to the focus, an upside down triangle, and once you have your research question, now from that question, I mean, in the beginning of the introduction, you're trying to explain what the problem is and what is your specific research question. Uh, and, um, and now, from that, you write down your objectives. Um, uh, and, and now, based on your objectives, what is your methodology? And we have to uh, spend, still spend, uh, methodology wasn't invented in a day. We want to make sure we get the right methodology. And so, I'm going to rely very heavily on Rahab and Tamar, uh, our methodologists. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and other faculty members as well, like Maha and Zinab, to help us out with the methodology. And, uh, and then the, um, also, once you have your methodology, start thinking about your recruitment methods. Uh, and because your recruitment methods are going to be very important in determining whether your study is feasible or not. We, I've, I've heard groups started uh, uh, talking uh, about uh, recruitment methods. Uh, so uh, those are the important uh, pieces uh, to the puzzle. So start thinking about what your question is, your objectives, your methodology, and start to think about your recruitment method because by the end of these three days, you need to know whether your project is feasible or not. Okay. And um, uh, I... 
Uh, I, I'm reading that uh, Katrina didn't have uh, uh, time ran out, uh, but time, listen, there's no such thing as time running out. Okay, because we'll continue the discussion on the forum. Okay, so that that is not a concept. Time running out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Time does not run out. Okay. Uh, all right, and Katrina says, uh, no problem. Okay. okay, very good. That's the spirit. All right. Any um, any remaining thoughts about the process? Okay, thank you. Time continues to exist. Uh, well, it's a, maybe we'll talk about time, the construct of time, okay. and, and what is time all about, the philosophical meaning of time. Okay. It's, uh, let's stop talking about all this research and stop talking about the real stuff, time. Okay, okay. And um, what was I going to say uh, before I got off track? Um, and, uh, oh, yes, as I, uh, I think I have a list of which, which groups you are all in, okay? So if I put you in, in the wrong group, my apologies. Just um, uh, let me know and I'll switch you, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm gonna do that right away. When we leave, I'm gonna create four different forums, okay? And, uh, but if I put you in the wrong group, just let me know and I'll, I'll switch you. No problem. Okay. Okay. Any other any other question? I, I think this has been a fabulous uh, session. Uh, I, I I am uh, I should have had the same optimism as as John did that uh, there has been really minimal if any disruptions. Um, and uh, and uh, I think you bring us good luck. Um, and so, uh, I mean, uh, a few people might have had some uh, problems with connectivity issues, um, but it, it's been amazing. Um, so it's, uh, and your participation has been fantastic. Um, and this has been a high point of the week for me. Um, so I appreciate uh, your, your input. Okay. Any anything else? Oh, okay. All right. So I have to I have to run and get get uh, get another cup of coffee for the rest of the day. Okay. All right. So uh, same time tomorrow, seven o'clock, same Zoom. So uh, instructions. So I don't have to send it out. So. You all have a, a pleasant evening and we'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, good. Henry, can you can you stay for a few minutes? I have oh, a, yes. a, a couple of questions about tomorrow for you that I wanted to point out. Know, and it's oh, easier okay, for me sure. to talk than to email if you don't mind. Oh so yeah, absolutely. Get for a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good.